Hi, I'm Zor. Welcome to a new Zor Education. Um, continue talking about uh, uh, solid geometry. Um, I would like to discuss today the coordinates in uh, in, in three-dimensional space. Well, this lecture, as uh, as you know, is part of the educational website unizor.com. That's where I suggest you to watch this lecture from because there are very important notes. Um, also, website allows you to basically enroll uh, and uh, in, into a specific course or part of the course or a specific topic and take exams, which is very good for like home education or um, so-called flipped classroom. Anyway, so coordinates in three-dimensional space. Quite frankly, uh, I'm sure that many of you actually know what I'm talking about. Well, if I will draw a picture, something like this, and so this is X, this is Y, and this is Z, you, you know what, what this coordinate system actually is. Nevertheless, I would like to talk a little bit about this, maybe on a little bit more rigorous level, and um, uh, probably I will also introduce, maybe in another lecture, other systems, not non-Cartesian system, like cylindrical coordinates and spherical coordinates, but that's subject of other lectures. So today I will, I will be talking, uh, I will be talking about coordinates and specifically about Cartesian uh, coordinates. Well, first of all, why do we need coordinates? Well, um, you might say that we need coordinates just to be able to identify our position in the world relative to some um, some system, some reference system. Well, which is true. Um, also, we need coordinates to be um, more numerical about our um, geometrical properties. For instance, we are talking about, let's say, a sphere as a set of points which are equidistant from a center. Now, um, this is purely geometrical uh, explanation. Now, is there any algebraic expression of exactly the same property? Yes, it is. It exists and uh, it allows to, to do something relatively sophisticated um, uh, proofs of certain properties. So there are certain things which cannot be actually addressed purely geometrically and we resort to coordinates and numerical representation of certain um, geometrical objects or their properties in order to be able to uh, to better investigate basically what, what these properties are or what these geometrical objects really are. Especially it's important in those cases when geometry is not applicable at all. And I'm talking about higher, di higher dimensional space than three, four dimensional, five dimensional, whatever, 39 dimensional space. Now, these do exist. Um, it's not in our uh, traditional geometrical um, imagination but uh, they exist in certain theories which require this type of approach. And there are no geometry which could support actually certain properties or certain um, uh, statements about uh, geometrical objects. So you have to resort to some numerical analysis and that's where coordinate system, especially Cartesian coordinate system, is very useful. So, Back to our Cartesian system. So, what's the definition? Uh, now, now there are many ways you can define Cartesian system of coordinates in in uh, three-dimensional space. Um, here is one of the way, one of the ways we can you can actually do it. First of all, you definitely need a fixed point which you can call origin of the coordinate system. Um, now. Once this point is chosen, then, as I was saying, there are three coordinates which we have to define somehow. So, the first of all, we have to choose um, the axis. Um, now, I would prefer to start from 
the axis which differentiates three-dimensional from two-dimensional case, which is traditionally called z-axis, and traditionally it's drawn vertically on, on the board or on the paper. So this is the axis which I'm talking about. Now, axis must be directional, so we have to choose a specific direction. Now, next, what we do is, we choose a plane which is going through this point of origin, and it's perpendicular to our axis Z. Alright, so let's draw it something like this. Now, in this plane, We have to choose two mutually perpendicular axes, which I will call x and y. So let's say this is my x-axis, and this is my y-axis. Well, actually, this is a solid line, because it's on, on the plane. So now I have three axes which are mutually perpendicular to each other. Now z is perpendicular to both x and y because z is perpendicular to the plane. And I will call this plane xy plane. Now x is perpendicular to y because that's how we have constructed and y is perpendicular to x, and both of them are perpendicular to z because they belong to the plane, which is perpendicular to z. So all of them are mutually perpendicular, all three axes. Now, what also is important is direction. Traditionally, the direction of these axes are chosen in such a way that if you will look uh, from the positive direction of z, towards the xyz plane, then the direction from positive direction of x to positive direction of y would be counterclockwise. This is a traditional way of representing graphically these three axes. So all three of them are mutually perpendicular and the directionality is chosen in such a way that from the positive z, if you look down from x to y direction would be, from positive x to positive y direction would be counterclockwise. Alright, so we have defined three axes. Now, what's next? Next, we have to define a unit of measurement, which we take as one, whatever that segment actually is. Now, obviously, that's sufficient to define three numerical uh, characteristics of any point. Let's say we have a point P and I would like to define the uh, position of the point P using my three axes and certain uh, real numbers. So the way to do it, again there are many ways to do it, but here is the way which I have suggested, which I'm suggesting to you right now you draw a perpendicular plane from this point P to each of those three axes. So perpendicular to Z would be something like this and it intersects at point let's say A Z. Now perpendicular to Y that would be this. Plane can, can look something like this. Perpendicular to Y. And that would be uh, the intersection with Y. And finally, perpendicular to X, something like this. And the plane may be like this, whatever. And that's the perpendicular to Y and AX. So I have three points. From the point P, I have a perpendicular plane to Z, to Y, and to X, and they all uh, intersect uh, the corresponding axis at certain points. So now, if this is my origin is point O, I have three segments. 
Now, each of those segments has certain lengths using this unit of measurement. And also, I will assign a sign if um, my point A Y or A X or A Z are on the positive branch of the axis, it will be a plus sign. If it would be on a negative, for instance, something like this, if I will have a point A here, then its coordinates uh, can be negative Z, maybe positive X and negative Y, something like this. So these three will go to my X, Y, and Z coordinates, which, which are the lengths of these segments with a sign depending on where my point of projection actually is. Now, is this the only way? Of, of course not. I can do it differently and get exactly the same result. Here is another variation. I will drop a perpendicular from point P. Actually, let me draw another better picture. Now, it will be exactly the same result. Let's say this. So that would be my x, that would be my y, and this would be my z. And the point P is somewhere here. So I drop a perpendicular to a plane. Let's say this is a plane, x, y plane, all right? So I drop a perpendicular to the plane, and from this point, I will uh, I, I will um, uh, drop a perpendicular to the x and perpendicular to y. So if this is a, this is a x, this is a y, and uh, I also have to drop a perpendicular to z. It would be a z. So that's another way of doing this. But to tell the truth, it's exactly the same thing. And you can, ex as an exercise, you can actually um, prove that whether I'm doing it this way, dropping perpendicular to x, y plane, and then from this point perpendicular to two axes, or I will have a perpendicular plane which goes um, perpendicularly to z to y and to, to x, I will always get exactly the same points, x, uh, a x, a, a, a y, and a z. So these points are actually projections of my uh, point A onto each of the axes. In any case, we come up with three numbers, which are, as I was saying, the lengths of these three segments with a proper sign depending on the oops depending on the position um, uh, of, of these projection points. Now it might actually um, look like I have chosen uh, the axis uh, a, uh, the z-axis as, as some special axis. Actually no, they're all absolutely interchangeable. I can start with x or y, it doesn't really matter. What does matter is that in our three-dimensional world we need three axes and three numbers in a Cartesian system. Um, that's, that's what actually uh, gives the name three-dimensional world, because there are three characteristics of every point. If you have some kind of a frame of reference, you need three numbers to identify the position of this point. In other non-Cartesian systems, like cylindrical or spherical system, which I will be discussing in next lectures, you will need different uh, numbers, there will be angles or something, but there's still three. So no matter how you, that, that's what's quite, quite interesting actually, so no matter how you um, approach this uh, task of, of finding, a pos of identifying actually the position of a point, in three-dimensional world, you need three numbers. Many different ways to do it, but you still need three numbers. So dimensionality is really a very, very important property. All right, so um, I, would, I would like to mention one very important thing. 
with each point I was just explaining how I can connect this each point to a triplet of numbers x, y, and z now my next question is is it one-to-one -one correspondence between all the points in three-dimensional space and all the triplets of real numbers and the answer is yes so for each point I will get some three numbers and for each triplet of numbers I can get the point now let me just go in reverse so if I have three numbers I'm basically fixing the position of three points on three axes the uh, point actually is on the length equal to the absolute value of corresponding uh, number and the position on one side and the positive side of the of the axis or a negative based on the sign so I have three points now if I have three points three projections does it define uniquely um, my position a yes absolutely and again to construct it you might you might do something like this within the XY um, area using a X and a Y you draw a couple of perpendiculars uh, and uh, you will hit one particular point that's a projection of my point A on the um, XY plane then you have a perpendicular uh, to this and uh, again depending on the sign you go up or down on the length which is actually specified uh, by absolute value of the Z so you can always construct from a point you can construct a triplet, from a triplet you constru can construct a point um, another story is um, and that's much more um, subtle and I would, I would say delicate issue in, in mathematics are all the points in space um, can be converted or in, into tripl triplets of number or are all the triplets of, uh, of numbers can be converted into a particular point so that actually uh, as I was saying a delicate object uh, intuitively it's obvious now if you want to do it like absolutely rigorously well um, that's not so easy I mean there are certain axioms you have to uh, you have to use um, and uh, I would rather stay away from this issue and um, let's just concentrate on intuitively obvious fact that any number can be converted into a segment basically with the length of which is specified by this number and then from the end of this segment we can actually construct the point so that that's quite an obvious um, uh, statement and that's what I would like to stop actually and not go any um, uh, further um, as far as the rigorousness is concerned all right what have I not covered okay the names all right the x coordinate is called abscissa the y coordinate is called ordinate and the z coordinate is called applicate So this is x, this is y, and this is z. Well, it's just the names. I mean, so if somebody says, okay, abscissa and, and such and such ordinate, and such and such and applicate, and such and such, it means x, y, and z coordinates in the Cartesian system. All right, what else is interesting? Okay, now there are a couple of exercises which I actually would like to, uh, to do with you, just to have a feel of why exactly these uh, coordinate systems might be important and how they can be used okay so I will just ask a couple of questions and then and I will answer it myself all right so let's take the origin uh, of coordinates now this is a point and as any point it's supposed to have some coordinates so what are these coordinates well just think about if you will um, draw a perpendicular to every uh, axis the plane perpendicular to every axis it will go through the same point so basically it's zero 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 right 
So if I will draw only the positive directions to make my picture a little bit cleaner. So this is my original coordinates. Now a plane perpendicular to Z would go through this, per plane perpendicular to Y goes through this, and plane perpendicular to O goes again, again through this point O. So three planes are intersecting in the same plane O. So uh, the length of each segment on each axis is zero, right? Okay, next question. Can I numerically or algebraically um, explain that I would like to talk about a geometrical object which is XY plane? So, what are the characteristics of uh, three coordinates of the points which belong to XY plane? So, every point here. So, if I will, would like to say, okay, what is the equation which kind of connects x, y, and z together, which describes the whole plane um, uh, with uh, the whole plane which is x, y plane. Well, let's just think about it. X can be anything because the point can be anywhere. So projection of the point to the x-axis can be any positive, negative doesn't matter. Y, same thing. And only projection on the Z, what is the plane which is um, going from this point perpendicular to Z? Well, the same XY plane, right? Because X is, uh, X is perpendicular to Z and Z perpendicular and Y per perpendicular to Z. So the whole plane XY is perpendicular to Z. And this point belongs to this plane. So if I will have a plane which is perpendicular to Z, now this plane is XY. Plane. So any point on the xy plane, if I will draw a plane perpendicular to z, it will coincide with xy plane and it will intersect z exactly at point zero, which means that the z coordinates should be equal to zero, while x and y can be any. So this is an equation which basically represents all the points which are lying on the plane xy. I hope I explained it in uh, relatively, uh, relatively well. So again, how do I determine coordinates? I'm taking this point and draw a perpendicular plane to all three axes, right? And wherever these perpendicular planes uh, intersect, that would be my projection. So projection from this point can be somewhere on x plane, somewhere on uh, x axis, somewhere on y axis, but on z axis it will be always zero because the point belongs to this plane which is perpend already perpendicular to z. So this is equation of the xy plane. So the plane has equation. Now incidentally any equation of this type is a plane which will go through the uh, origin at some angle probably since all my uh, now I'm not going to prove it right now but basically that's that's what it is and if you will have a some kind of a constant here that might be actually any plane um, in space in three-dimensional space all right so next exercise angle bisector between y and z. Okay, so within the yz plane I have an angle bisector and I would like to uh, find an equation, algebraic equation of x, y, and z which represents all points on this. Now let's just think about it. Since this particular uh, point anywhere on this bisector belongs to yz plane which is perpendicular to x axis it means that projection from any point on this bisector within yz plane projection onto the x axis would always hit point zero right because the entire 
yz plane is perpendicular to the x and the intersected at, 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 at origin of the coordinate. So the plane which is perpendicular to uh, x axis from this point is actually yz plane which intersects at zero, which means x is equal to zero. That's my first um, uh, equation, which basically narrows down all the points in the universe to only the points which are lying on this plane. But now I have an additional requirement. Uh, additional requirement. The requirement is that I am on a bisector of this angle, right? Now, bisector obviously means that these two coordinates, y coordinate and z coordinate, are the same, right? Since these angles are the same, and this is common hypotenuse, it means that our catchety are uh, congruent to each other. So the second equation, which is also supposed to be part of the algebraic expression of the property that the point lies on the bisector, is y is equal to z. So together, as a system, these two equations define the uh, this line, the bisector of the uh, this angle between y, -ax y, y axis and, and z axis. All right. Now, the third example, the fourth example, whatever, which I would like to present is I would like to describe somehow a sphere. Not just any sphere, but a sphere. A sphere which is which has a center exactly at the origin of coordinates and the radius r well okay let's just think about how can I express this now we know that the sphere is a set of all points in three-dimensional space which are equidistant from its center. Now, center is at the origin, right? So let's just take some point, let's say here, on a sphere, on my side of the sphere. Now, here. Now, its distance from the center is the length of this segment, right? Well, let's just take the coordinates of this uh, uh, of this point A, x, y, and z, and let's express in terms of x, y, and z the lengths of the OA. Well, first of all, we have to drop a perpendicular uh, from the point A to the x, y, z. That would be easier, right? and perpendicular from this to this and this. So this will be my AX and this will be my AY. So, the length of uh, OAX is my X coordinate. The length of OAY is my Y coordinate and Obviously, the length of the AB would be uh, my Z coordinates, right? Because if you will perpendicular to Z, it would be something like this. So it will be the same as AB. Now, let's just think about OAB is the right triangle because AB is perpendicular to the plane 
xy plane, right? So it's perpendicular to any line, including OB. So this is the right angle. So OA is equal square is equal to OB square plus AB square. Now let's talk about OB square. Now OB square. Now this is a right triangle, right? OBAX is the right uh, triangle. Now OAX we know that's an X. Now AXB is obviously the same as OAY, which is Y. So this is X. This is Y. This was Z, by the way. So OB square is equal to X square plus Y square. Right? OB square is equal to OAX square plus AXB square, which is X square plus Y square. Now, AB square is Z square. So, my OA square is equal to X square plus Y square plus Z square. And what did I say in the very beginning? That this is a sphere, right? Sphere set of all the uh, points which are uh, equidistant from the center at, uh, at the distance uh, equal to radius r, right? So, this is supposed to be equal to r squared. Now, and this is an equation which defines a sphere in the three-dimensional uh, world with a center at the origin and the radius r. So, my point was that using the coordinate system you can always represent algebraically certain things which you might or might not want to consider geometrically and in many cases it's very useful not only to define your position in space but also to research certain properties of certain complicated geometrical figures um, which you might not actually be able to, to research in any way uh, other than algebraically and that's the very important purpose of the coordinates all right so basically that's that's all i wanted to talk about and as i was saying uh, cartesian coordinates is something which you are i'm sure familiar with but at the same time uh, i was trying to present maybe a little bit more mathematically a little bit more rigorously the same topic and plus examples like this are very very useful whenever you have some geometrical object in many cases it's very interesting and useful to represent it uh, algebraically using, um, in this case, Cartesian coordinates. And we will talk about other coordinate systems as well. Well, that's it for today. Thank you very much and good luck.